Hi folks, hey, now we turn our attention to solving trig equations. Solving trig equations, um, it's just kind of like how we, we're used to solving equations. Uh, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say how important this is for your future work in calculus. And even in trig, uh, here soon we're going to be learning something called the law of signs. And understanding the law of signs, and in particular what some people call the ambiguous case of the law of signs, You'll see there's nothing ambiguous about it if we remember how to solve trig equations. So I have um, oh, about like maybe 8 to 12 examples that I'm going to do here on solving trig equations. Just to give you a kind of rough overview on how to attack any trig equation that you could see. So the first one I'm starting with is uh, notice my directions. Solve in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So that's like we're going to find values of x that would be uh, consistent with making one trip around the unit circle. And the first equation is 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. I think it's natural, and, and what we will do first is to subtract 1 from both sides. So that gives us a 2 sine x equals negative 1. Now we divide both sides by 2, and we get sine x is negative one-half. This takes us right back to the unit circle. This is something that we should know off the unit circle. Where does sine equal negative one-half on the unit circle? There are two points on the unit circle where sine would be negative one-half. And those values of x are 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. The sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half, and the sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So this equation has two solutions, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Let's, I'll put part B right here next to A. Say we're asked to solve 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. But just like we started off in A, you know, we subtracted 1 from both sides. I would do a similar step here, except here I would start off by adding 1 to both sides. So I get 2 cosine x equals 1. And if you're thinking, divide both sides by 2, excellent. Divide both sides of the equation by 2. And now you're right back to a unit circle question. Where on the unit circle? One trip around the unit circle. Where on the unit circle does cosine equal one-half? There are two points on the unit circle. Those would occur at an x value of pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. These are the two solutions to this equation. So that's it for A and B. Come back, we're going to do, uh, we're going to solve a couple of more. All right, here on part C, uh, we have the equation 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. This kind of reminds me of a quadratic equation. And remember when solving a quadratic equation, one of the first things you looked for was to see if it factors. So I'm going to do that same first step here. I'm going to see if I can factor this. So let's see, factor. I put down two sets of parentheses. Uh, 2 cosine squared x, so I put a 2 cosine x here and a cosine x here. Uh, well, one, the only combinations we have there are 1 and 1. Now let's just figuring out if it would be a plus minus or a minus plus. I think it's a plus minus. And a quick check shows us that this is correct, because uh, if we were to FOIL this out, the O part of FOIL, 2 cosine x times negative 1, that's a negative 2 cosine x. The I part of FOIL is cosine x, and when you can take a negative 2 cosine x and you combine it with cosine x, that would give you a negative cosine x, which is what we need to have. So we were able to factor this. And just like with solving quadratic equations, once you have it factored, you would set each of these factors equal to 0. So we have a 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0, cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Continue working here, you'd subtract 1 from both sides. 
and then you would divide by two, and you have something friendly off the unit circle. Where does cosine equal negative one half? Well, cosine equals negative one half at two pi over three and four pi over three. Here you just add one to both sides. Where does cosine equal one? Well, cosine equals one at x equals zero, and then again at x equals two pi. But I'm not gonna list two pi, because in my directions, there's a parenthesis there around two pi, so it means we're not gonna include two pi. So these are the three solutions to that equation. The next one, We have a sine x plus square root 2 equals a negative sine x. So it's like we have a trig function, uh, this trig function sine x, we have one on each side of the equation. Well, similar to what you would do in algebra, you want to get those trig functions on the same side of the equation. So what I would do is I would subtract sine x from both sides of the equation to give me square root 2 is negative 2 sine x. And now if I divide both sides by negative 2, I get negative square root 2 over 2 is equal to sine x, something we know off the unit circle. Where does sine equal negative square root 2 over 2? Well, that occurs at 5 pi over 4 and also at 7 pi over 4. So those are the two solutions to the original equation. Okay, here, well, here in a minute, we'll look at, uh, well, we'll look at a couple of more, E and F. Hey folks, now we're getting to the more interesting looking uh, trig equations. We have one trig equation here, and we have two different trig functions involved. We, have, we see a sine and a cosine involved. Uh, this is where our knowledge of identities is going to help us out quite a bit. It's really, really, really difficult in general. It's really, really, really difficult to solve a trig equation if you have two different trig functions involved. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to see a trig equation with just one trig function involved. Kind of like all of them we've seen so far in A, B, C, and D. This is where identities can come in to help us. I see a sine squared here. I know cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals one. That's a Pythagorean identity. And since I know that, from that identity, I know sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x. Here, let me write that down real quick. We know this identity. From that identity, we know sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x. So for this sine squared x, why don't I just go ahead and substitute 1 minus cosine squared? And that'll give us something like this. Next up, I would distribute the two. So I get two minus two cosine squared x plus a three cosine x minus three equals zero. Now let's combine any like terms we have and uh, the only like terms that we have are the 2 minus 3, which gives me a minus 1. And now I'm going to try to factor this, but before I try to factor it, um, I, I really don't like trying to factor something that's quadratic or looks like a quadratic with a negative leading coefficient. Uh, there are too many combinations for me to worry about, and, and I'm sure I would... Uh, take a long time doing it. I just don't like to do it. So my end around on this is I'm going to take this equation and I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. It's legal, but it turns this into a quadratic looking creature that I'm more comfortable trying to factor. So um, let's try to factor this. 
see I have a 2 cosine squared x, so I'll put a 2 cosine x here and a cosine x here. 1, well that means this has to be a 1 and this has to be a 1. And whenever, remember back in algebra, whenever you saw a minus plus situation and you were factoring, that meant both of these signs had to be minus. But I, I am going to check real quick to make sure this is the correct factoring. And I uh, kind of look at the OI part of FOIL. There's a negative 2 cosine x minus a cosine x. It does give me a negative 3 cosine x. So I'm feeling good. I'm going to pull the problem up here. I'm going to set each of these factors equal to 0. So I have a 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0. And then add 1 to both sides here. And divide by 2. And sure enough, we're right back to the friendly unit circle. Where does cosine equal 1 half? Well, that occurs at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Where does cosine x equal 1? Well, at x equals 0. And again, we don't include the 2 pi. Parenthesis, don't include the 2 pi. So that's it for part E. Notice uh, how knowing a, 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 an identity helped us in doing the problem. Yep, I'm ready to do part F. Let me erase this. All right, here, check out part F. Um, we're asked to solve sine squared x equals 3 cosine squared x. We have one equation, two different trig functions. In general, that's really, really difficult to do. But as we saw in um, the last example, that sine squared, thanks to a Pythagorean identity, I can rewrite it as 1 minus cosine squared. So that's where I'm starting. Rewriting that as 1 minus cosine squared x. And now it's pretty straightforward. Add the cosine squared x to both sides. So you get 1 equals 4 cosine squared x. Divide both sides by 4. And now, just like you would do in algebra, you're going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. But be aware, when you take the square root of both sides, remember, you have to put that plus or minus in here. So the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half, but don't forget the plus or minus. And yep, something friendly off the unit circle. Where on the unit circle where we see cosine equaling a one-half or cosine equaling a negative one-half? Four places where that happens. It happens at x equals pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So this trig equation, we ended up with four solutions. That's it for F. Let's look at, I'll put G, I have enough space to put G right here. All right, so we have a sine 2x equals negative square root 3 over 2. Here's how I see this problem. I have sine of something equals negative square root 3 over 2. In fact, let me cover up the 2x with my hand. You don't see it. What needs to appear underneath my hand to make that a true equation? Sine of what is negative square root 3 over 2? Well, I think we need to see... 4 pi over 3, because I know the sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative square root 3 over 2, and 5 pi over 3. That's what needs to appear under my hand. That's what 2x must equal. It must equal 4 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. You know, you see in your book, and I'm going to tell you a little trick here. Um, these are the two angles that you would get on your first trip around the unit circle, 0 to 2 pi.
But if you were to look at the graph of sine 2x on the interval 0 to 2 pi, you would see it makes two cycles. That's right, we're going way back to the concept of graphing, because sine 2x would have a period of pi, so on the interval 0 to 2 pi, it would make two cycles. So what does that mean here? What's the trick? What's the trick I'm getting at? Well, if these are the two angles you get on the first trip around the unit circle, this 2 tells you make a second trip around the unit circle. And on your second trip around the unit circle, all you are doing, you're just finding angles that are coterminal with those two angles. Coterminal angles, wow, that's way back to the beginning of the course. So how do you find coterminal angles? You just simply add 2 pi. So the 2 tells me to make a second trip around the unit circle. These are the angles I get on the first trip. On the second trip, I just add 2 pi to each of these. So 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, that's 10 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi is 11 pi over 3. Now we're asked, all these problems we've been asked to solve, and we've been solving by telling you know, the final answer, what x equals. We don't want to know what 2x equals. We want to know what is x. What's the value of x that makes this a true equation? Well, if you know 2x must equal those things, to get x, all you have to do, well, just think about it, you divide each of these by 2. Or, if you prefer, multiply each of them by one half, because multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two. So if I come in here and I multiply each of those by one half, I get a two pi over three, a five pi over six, a five pi over three, and eleven pi over six. So this equation had four solutions. Notice all four of the solutions Notice they're all in the interval 0 to 2 pi. You could check all four of them to make sure that you do get, that they do check, you, you get a true statement. Um, but that's how I would do something like G. So let me erase, we'll come back and we'll look at, uh, look at another example, part H. Alright, hey, let's try one more of these. Um, here I have uh, cosine 2x equals 1 half. And again, when I see this, here's, how, here's what I'm thinking. Cosine of what? So let me cover up the 2x. Cosine of what equals 1 half? What needs to appear behind my hand to make that a true equation? Pi over 3 needs to appear there, and 5 pi over 3 needs to appear there. So that means what's behind my hand has to be pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. That means what's behind my hand, 2x, must equal pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. And again, the 2, remember the 2 is telling us, you know, make a second trip around the unit circle. You got those angles on the first trip, so on the second trip you're just finding angles coterminal to those two. Coterminal means add 2 pi to each of them. And see, pi over 3 plus 2 pi is 7 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi is 11 pi over 3. And just like in the last example, divide each of those by 2 or multiply by 1 half and you get pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Those are the four solutions to that equation. Alright, so I'm going to erase this for the, get ready for the next example. All right, hey, let's look at this one. This is kind of uh, set, setting the groundwork. It's laying the foundation uh, for what we're going to be seeing when we do uh, law of sines. That's coming up later on. Um, you have sine x equals 0 0.456. Now, that isn't something that I know off the unit circle. It's not a 1 half or square root 3 over 2 or square root 2 over 2. But I am going to draw a picture here. I'm going to bring it back to the unit circle. So there's a quick unit circle. We know sine on the unit circle, it matches up with a y-coordinate of a point. So this is the y-coordinate of some point on the unit circle. 
since it's positive, well, I know it's going to be somewhere in quadrant one. And also, there's a point over here on the unit circle in quadrant two that would have a y coordinate of 0 0.456. How am I going to get how am I going to get that angle measure and then that angle measure? If only there was something that would help us find angles. Inverse sine. That's the job of inverse sine for a problem like this. It's angle finder. So we know x is the inverse sine of 0 0.456. And guys, if you use your calculator, make sure you're in radian mode. Use your calculator. You'll get x is about 0 0.4734. Okay, that's this angle measurement here. It's about 0 0.4734. But we still have this angle measurement to get. How am I going to get that? Well, one of the beauties of the unit circle will be the symmetries on the unit circle. If this angle right here measures about 0.4734, that means over here, this angle measurement here, it has to have the same magnitude. It's the same size. It too is 0.4734. So to get, to get the angle measurement right here, that angle that we're trying to determine its size, it looks like all I'd have to do is take pi, which would bring me to here, and then subtract off the 0.4734. See that? Pi minus 0.4734. So the other angle is pi minus the 0.4734 and that gives us, if you use your calculator, you get something like 2.6681. So these are the two values and notice I, I used my calculator and I came up with a decimal approximation form. But those are the two values of x that would make that a true equation. Let's look at another one of these, uh, but first I have to erase the board. Alright, hey, I thought we'd try one of these that involved the trig function cosine. Keep in mind, I have cosine x is 0 0.317. That's not something I know exactly off the unit circle. It's not a friendly number, like the 1 half, or square root 3 over 2, or square root 2 over 2. But I do know that it's an x-coordinate, because on the unit circle, Sketch a unit circle again. On the unit circle, we know the trig function cosine matches up with an x-coordinate. So this has to be an x-coordinate of some point on the unit circle. Since it's positive, that means it's out here in quadrant 1 somewhere. Or down here in quadrant 4. So our game, we have to come up with that angle measure and that angle measure. So how are we going to find the angle? That's right, we're going to use angle finder. Inverse trig, that's its job. We know x is inverse cosine of 0 0.317. If I use my calculator, Make sure it's in radian mode. And I do inverse cosine of 0.317. I get x to be about 1.2482. That's this angle measurement. 1.2482. We still have one more. This one here. We still have to determine that angle measure. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, again, the beauty, the symmetries of the unit circle, the beauty of the unit circle are these symmetries. But if this angle measurement here is about 0.1, or is about 1.2482, that means this angle measurement here, it has to have the same magnitude. It has to have the same size of 1.2482. So how do I get this angle measurement? Well, I think the 
quick way to do it is come all the way around, which would be 2 pi, and then subtract off that 1.2482. So I think if I take 2 pi and subtract off the 1.2482, I will get, according to my calculator, 5.03495. So these are the two values of x that makes this equation a true statement. And again, it all comes back to the unit circle. One more. All right, here we are, folks, the last example. Solving trig equations, solving the interval 0 to 2 pi. Sine x is 1.214. I should be able to look at this. I should be able to look at this equation and immediately say, this equation has no solution. Why? Why does it have no solution? Because this number is larger than 1. You can't find a number, an angle, a radius. You can't do sine of something and get a result larger than 1. Sine of anything will always be between negative 1 and 1. So I see a number here larger than 1. I say no solution. And I'm happy because that's a pretty friendly problem. So that's a look at uh, some solving of trig equations. Um, hopefully it's making sense and hopefully you can um, uh, get through the homework and have a good time with it. Thanks for watching.